Welcome to Webcast Wednesday. In case we haven't met, my name is Linda Shopman and I'm Senior Counselor at the Career Development Office of Widener University School of Law. Today we're going to discuss interviewing. This is a very, very important topic, especially since the on-campus interviews are going to be starting very soon, and we'd like to make sure you're prepared for what's going to happen to you in that interview process. First, I want to talk about the basics of interviewing. B-A-S-I-C-S, -S, little acronym for everybody. B, be on time. Respect the interviewer's time, for them time is money, and be on time. Don't waste their time. Two, access information on the firm. If you want that firm and you like that firm, you should know about that firm. S, see yourself in the social media. Check out what people are writing about you on their walls, on your wall. Make sure that there is nothing on there that can embarrass you or embarrass the interviewer. You could lose a job very quickly that way. I, interview the interviewer. This usually comes at the end of the interview where the interviewer says, do you have any questions? Have some. Because if you don't have some, it does not look like you're very interested in the firm, the job, or anything else like that. Find some questions and ask them. Do not ask questions that have already been answered or the answers should have been able to get from your research of the firm. Do not ask how many attorneys you have in this firm when you could look that firm up and find out in 30 seconds online. C, conservative dress. Now a quickie on that. For men, blue suits, black suits, white shirts. I would not say first interview do pastel shirts. Maybe the second or third, not the first. Your shoes shined, no visible piercings, please. Hair tidy and you're shaved. Females, women, a suit, skirt, a skirt suit, sorry, or a pantsuit. Now, if it's a skirt suit, please have the skirt at least above your knees, not just right on your knee. Don't make it too short because, number one, that's awkward to sit in, and number two, it can be very embarrassing if you have to bend over or something. Again, neutral colors. Blue, black is very good. Uh, pantsuits should be pants should come down to above just about cutting off the top of your shoe. Um, you can get all this information if you're still confused by either coming to Career Development Office or going to your local clothing store and they'll be glad to explain this to you. Um, ladies, not too much jewelry. If you have tattoos, cover them up. If you have four piercings on your ears, please just use one. And by all means, take the tongue piercing out, please. And S is the send-off. That's when you and the interviewer have finished and the interviewer is getting his papers together and getting ready to leave. You get ready to leave also. Stand up, shake the interviewer's hand, make sure he, he or she has your business card, get their business card and walk out. And when you're walking out, watch your posture. Walking is a very important thing. People judge you by the way you walk. Walk with your spine straight. Don't slump over or round your shoulders because that shows timidity, that shows um, lack of consciousness of body language. It's very important to watch your back and sit up straight. The basic interview are things that you have already gone through if you have gone through a workshop, interview workshop with me. And it's basically, you can get a copy of those questions that they ask in online in the Career Development Office site. So I won't go through all of them. The new kids on the block. First one is the behavioral interview. Now, I don't know if any of you have had the behavior interview, but this is how it goes. It is premised on the fact that past behavior indicates future behavior. Past successes indicate future successes. So what this is, is an open-ended question. And similar to, um, what did you do when the client walked out and slammed the door? What they're trying to find out is your professionalism, 
your communication skills, your poise, and how you would handle that client. Adversarial interviews. This is specifically for the people who want to go into prosecution or defense work and are working a lot in court. We found out about this in a very embarrassing way. One of our students was very, very upset after her interview. And we talked to the interviewer who was working for the DA's office and she said, if they can't argue with me, they're not going to be able to argue in court. So what this is about is you go in to the interviewer and she either looks at your resume or your writing sample and picks a topic to argue. And I mean argue. She will pick one side of the argument and you will pick the other. If you pick her side, she'll pick the other. And you will have to convince her you are right. Now, there is no right or wrong. There is no pat answer. There is nothing written in horn books or anything else that has the answer to the story. You just have to convince her you can argue a case and not be overwhelmed by the opposition and not be frightened by what they may say. The next one is tongue-in-cheek called Recruiting Couch Interview. Now this is more about getting to know the people. Okay? Um, firms now in the economic downturn are very, very cautious about who they hire. They want to know more about them. They want to know more about what makes them tick, uh, all their skills, because one bad hire by a law firm will get them charged with about $250,000 loss. Now this isn't necessarily cash money, but this is definitely loss. And these firms feel that 30, 30 minutes and lunch does not make it. You don't know anything about anybody in 30 minutes and lunch, um, except if they know how to use the right fork. The, the, and the sorry, recruiting couch interview, they use assessments. And these assessments are either online or you do it in the office. It's almost like personality profiles, like um, some of the ones you know, Myers-Briggs, for example. What they do is they want to find out your leadership skills, your emotional intelligence skills, and your communication skills. And, you're, and then you have to write an essay. They pick the topic, you write. Let's take one step back. If you do not know what in, uh, intelligence is, okay, emotional intelligence, sorry, what emotional intelligence is, please find out. Come to us. We can give you books you can read. Go online and look it up because this is the wave of the future and please at least know what it is. Because when somebody talks to you about, you know, intelligence and emotional intelligence and what that means, and be prepared to have a conversation. Don't sit there and say, duh, never heard of it. Look it up because you are going to be asked at some point in time about emotional intelligence. The next one is a three-pronged interview. And this was developed by the Summer Associates at Pepper Hamilton. The first prong is an interactive activity. It's a situational thing where one of the partners brings up a case and you communicate about the case. You talk about the issues, you talk about what kind of law you may be using. They want to know if you can analyze a case, analyze the facts and see what you can apply with them. The second part of this interview is defending your written sample. Please read your written sample before this interview, before any interview. But in this one, they will read your written sample and they will argue what you say in that sample writing. Know what you say and be able to back it up. After all, you did all the research to get it, so you should be able to know what's in there. The next part is what I would call the original interview. That's where you ask those questions I'm sure you all know. Tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work here? All those ambiguous questions that you say, what do they really want to know? In, um, on the web, under the career development site, we have those questions available to you to look at and to try to think of an answer for them. If you have problems, come see us and we'll help you work with that also. 
an inter interactive simulation, just for those who don't know, is when two people get together, the interviewer brings up a topic, a case like, um, what do you tell a parent when the school is kicking their child out? How do you work with them? And what you do is you have to list all the way you would approach it, all the different parts of it, and possibly the different law. And what they're looking for is can you, number one, apply the law, two, can you see all the issues involved? Not just the school's bad mom's good, but all the issues involved. And can you make sure you talk to all the clients and find out what all the issues are involved? Again, excuse me, can you maintain your position? They're going to argue back, you have to maintain your position. What they're looking for, again, is intelligent analysis of the situation. They're looking for a passion and enthusiasm for arguing cases. For getting down and gritty and just arguing the cases as you would in court in front of a jury. This is what the three prong is looking for. The next one sounds easy, but I particularly think it might be harder than any others. This is called the group interview. Now, I have to do it aside here and say, this is not a panel interview, this is a group interview. Panel interviews are when the whole, when the firm sits down at a great big table, and you sit here, and they all have access to you to ask questions. A group interview is when the firm picks maybe the five or six highest uh, candidates, the best candidates, the ones that they are really, you know, the top of the list, so to speak. They put you in a room, and they have an interviewer come in and drop a concept, drop a discussion title, and you have to discuss it with your fellow people. I find this a little bit nerve-wracking because sometimes I have a problem interjecting myself into a group. And if you have that problem, I suggest you practice. I said maybe get a bunch of your friends and sit down and have them a conversation and practice interjecting, how to slide into the group and get your words said and your ideas across. Because a big part of what they're looking for is what people like to say, well, being able to convince other people of your side. I say manipulation. Mm -hmm. You are going to manipulate these people. You are going to change their thinking. You're going to make them believe in you before the discussion's over. This is what they're looking for. This is what you're going to do in court. And this is how you're going to win your cases. Um, they're also looking for leadership, as always. As you see, there's a trend in all of these. They're all looking for leadership. They're all looking for teamwork. They don't want somebody to come in who is going to hide in the corner and not be able to do anything. A lot of this is personality driven, so be very careful. Preparation. I would like you to review your resume, to review your written sample. Practice this argument with your best friend or somebody. Do it in the mirror. Debate different sides of an argument. You could pick your argument, you know, best football team, whatever, and debate it. Because I want you to have practice expressing your thoughts in a persuasive way. Secondly, if you want to, you can do again. That group, have a whole a bunch of students talk, and learn how to interject yourself into the group to be able to say what you need to say. Because that's very important. The only other things I can tell you about these interviews is be confident. When we talked about posture before, stand up straight. Look like you own the world, but don't be arrogant. Just be very confident of yourself. And remember, you have to be the best you you can be, because that's all you can do. A little aside. What I'm saying about these interviews does not say, does not indicate, does not show that you don't have to worry about your GPA or your resume. That's a fallacy. You do. You don't need a GPA slide because you say, oh, I can sell ice cubes to Eskimos. The GPA and the resume get you into the office. From there, you sell yourself. So don't slide on those two just because you have a good way of talking. This is not going to happen. I wish you all luck. If you have any questions, would you please come talk to us? We'll be very, very glad to talk to you. Good evening. Good evening.